Hello, everybody. Welcome, welcome. Welcome. I think I'm live here. <laughs> welcome to Thriving Thursday. I hope you've all had a really good week, another week that flew by. Perhaps some of you are starting to wind down at work, hopefully for some well-deserved time off next week. Maybe instead of winding down, some of you are winding up, trying to get everything done before the holidays come upon us. Either way, I hope that you are able to take a little bit of time off or just re-energize, reset, take care of yourself in the coming days over the holidays and into the new year so you can feel your best as we start 2021. So with that said, hello, Jan. So glad that you are on. Welcome. <laughs> I want to welcome you again to Thriving Thursday and thank you for joining me. Whether you're live or whether you are catching the replay later, I'm Carla. I'm a former management consultant turned full-time RV nomad turned entrepreneur and career and life coach. And on Thriving Thursdays, I broadcast from wherever our little 84 square foot home on wheels, our little casita takes us. This week, we are still in West Texas, uh, definitely away from the snow that I've been hearing has caught a lot of people up in the Northeast. I am a little bit jealous. I love the snow. There's nothing more holiday-ish than <laughs> the snow, at least that I associate, you know, Christmas time, the holiday season with um, with snow. And we have none of that in West Texas, but sun, uh, but I'm also grateful for that. So um, on Thriving Thursdays, I share stories on better living and career empowerment. And today marks week three of the three-week 2021 roadmap planning series that we have been talking about. In week one, you may remember, I talked about envisioning what it is that you really want in 2021, specifically from the perspective of how you want to grow and how you want to feel. And last week, which was part two, I shared a really important component of goal setting, which is identifying those elements that work for you in helping you be at your best, right? I call it your best you recipe. What are those ingredients that are important for you to be at your best? For example, proper nutrition, proper sleep, relationships that ignite and inspire you, not drain you. What is it that you specifically need in order to perform your best in reaching your goals in the most optimal, optimal way. So that was week two. This week, I'm putting it all together into a nicely wrapped package and walking you through the process that I am using to build an actual roadmap for 2021. I just completed my own earlier this morning, and so I'm going to be sharing exactly what the steps were that I took incorporating this this idea of growth focus and the recipe for your best you. So I'll start by saying that in the past, the way that I set goals for the new year, very much consisted of just grabbing a notebook and just writing down a list, whatever list came to my mind of the things that I thought I should accomplish in the coming year. What I didn't do was I didn't really dig into why these goals were important for me how they allowed me to grow and, and be better and how they would allow me to feel. And worst of all, there were many, many goals that I just never even achieved, right? I lost focus. I lost my attention that I had on them. I never followed through. And over the last couple of years in particular, my way of thinking about goals and how I set goals for myself has changed quite a bit given my training as a coach and my understanding of what is a much more holistic process and mindset that really helps you to set goals in a way that really is about maximizing your potential and, and really about reaching your goals in a way that that takes from the best of you and allows you to be the best of you. Um, much better than just simply writing down a list. So with that said, I'm going to share with you the five steps that I took that you can take as well in building this roadmap that will help set you up for a productive, what I hope will be a productive and fruitful and most importantly, fulfilling 2021. So let's start with step number one. If you haven't yet thought about how you want to feel in 2021 or how, sorry, how you want to grow, let's start with the growth piece how you want to grow in 2021, now is the time to do that. 
That is the first most important step in this five-step process. I want you to write down the major goals that you have for yourself and, and the ways that you want to grow in 2021. Ideally, these goals should be broad. They should be aspirational. They might be a little bit vague. For example, one of my growth focus goals for 2021 is to expand my skill set as as a coach. I want to be the best coach that I can be. And so I want to grow my skill set, right? It's very growth oriented, a little bit broad. You know, I don't haven't yet said how I'm going to do that. It's more just expand my skill set. And that's okay at this point to be broad, to be a little bit vague. We just want to write down those big aspirations that you have for yourself and how you want to grow in new ways in 2021, whether they're related to your work, for example, the ones that I wrote down were very specific to how I want to grow my business, but you may want to write them down in relation to your work, your personal life outside of work, your health, a little bit of all of them, whichever one, whichever category um, serves you best is perfectly fine. I would suggest, though, keeping that number of, of growth goals to like five or six, something that is realistic, something that doesn't feel like you have 20 goals in 2021. You can certainly add them as the year goes on, but let's start with a number that feels doable and realistic for you. So for me, it was six. For you, it might be six, two or five, doesn't matter, but try to keep it in something that feels really doable for you. So that's step number one, write down those growth oriented goals that you want to achieve and, and really set for yourself in 2021. Step number two, for each of these growth-oriented goals, I want you to think about the so what. What are the benefits? What's in it for you? You know, what will growing in these ways do for you? How will you feel if you, you know, at or as you achieve these these growth goals? And the reason that I want to focus on the benefits and the feelings that attaining these goals will create for you is that in order to stay committed to the goals, right? It's one thing to say, oh, I'm gonna do all these things. As time goes on, things happen and it's important to have some mechanisms to stay committed and stay connected to why these goals are important to you. So writing down the so what of these goals is a way for you to have something to come back to that fuels motivation, something to keep you going when the going gets rough and when you feel like throwing in the towel and giving up. You also need a barometer to help you keep track. You know, how are you doing as you're going along? And so by writing down what's in it for you and, and how what this will do for you, what these goals will do for you, you'll have something that you can come back to and say, OK, you know, am I really am I feeling these ways? Am I starting to create these benefits for myself? Not at the end of the 2021 year, but as you're going along and as you're pursuing these goals, maybe in January, you can already start to feel some of those benefits start to come to fruition or by February or March. So, you know, one other thing too, is that you, if you have spent time thinking about how you want to feel in 2021, which we talked about, you know, in, in week one, look at your list of your so what and say, you know, are these growth goals that I have for myself going to create these feelings for me? You know, that's an important connection to make between the ways that you want to grow. These should start to generate some of those feelings that you identify. So that's step two, the so what. What is the, what's the benefit? What, what will you get out of attaining those growth goals? Let's move to step three. And step three is probably my favorite. I love like the more tactical parts of planning. And this is getting a little bit more tactical. Um, and it's really where the rubber begins to meet the road so to speak. So step three is about starting to map out the milestones that you want to reach across each of your growth areas. What do you want to achieve, right? Like this is where you start to write down like, okay, I want to grow in these ways. Now, how do I make it happen? What are those milestones that I'm going to need to reach each month, you know, each quarter in order to bring these growth goals into reality? Instead of writing these milestones willy-nilly, however, I do want to emphasize how important it is to create a timeline around it. You know, put these milestones against a timeline, not a years long timeline, but what I recommend is a 90 day timeline. What are those milestones that you would like to achieve against these growth areas in January, in February, and in March of next year? So start to put those milestones in a very specific time frame against each each month of the first quarter. There's two things about this approach that I wanna highlight. One is that this list of milestones that you're putting together 
is meant to be evergreen, meaning that you should be coming back to this list of milestones about every, you know, not just every 90 days, don't come back to it at the end, but come come back to that list, you know, every week, ideally, look at those different milestones that you have in January, come into the first week of January and look at what you've set out for yourself and start to think about, okay, you know, are these realistic? And, and that's what I mean by evergreen is that as you go along, you'll realize that maybe some of them were a little too ambitious or maybe not ambitious enough. And so this list should be looked at often so you can adjust as life happens and as you move along. So that's one thing. And then another thing that I want to mention about this milestone, these milestones specifically, is that we're focusing on the 90 days because things change, right? The last thing that I want to happen is that you set yourself a milestone for July. <laughs> July is six months away. That's a very long, or you know, seven months away. That's a, that's a long time from now. And so a lot is going to happen. And so 90 days is a really nice time frame that is long enough for you to set some ambitious goals, right? But it's short enough that is realistic and where you can really start to be specific with this with this more shorter time frame. All right. So take it only 90 days at a time. That's what I recommend. So that's step number three, writing down your milestones against the timeline, ideally a 90 day time frame, identifying milestones for each month over the next three months. All right. Step number four is where I want you to think about what I covered in the last video, which is what is that formula or recipe that is going to help you follow through on your particular milestones? So from a physical perspective, what do you need in order to feel great, in order to show up and have energy and just feel at your best? You know, maybe think about how many hours of sleep do you need and what do you need to do to honor those number of hours of sleep? Or in what ways do you need to adjust your diet, you know, to have food that really nourishes you and really fuels you in the way that that serves you best? Or what type of exercise do you need to incorporate or let go of in order to really feel at your best physically? Or when we think of the mental aspect, you know, what do you need in order to be clear and to be focused? How can you best organize your responsibilities, for instance, at work so you don't feel overwhelmed, so you feel like your 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 pace is is right for you? From a relationship aspect, you know, who is that who makes up that team that is going to be supporting you in 2021? And how are you going to nurture those relationships? And who are the people that you maybe need to not spend so much time with in 2021, because they perhaps drain your energy? How are you going to make sure that you're surrounding yourself with the people that are going to be supporting you? So that's what I mean by this recipe, you know, spend some time thinking now that you've got those milestones laid out, now it's going to be a much more realistic exercise to look at that recipe and say, what do I need to do for myself to change, to add, to take away in the ways that I am honoring my health, my mental clarity, the way that I uh, interact with others, perhaps maybe the environment around me. So think about, you know, what is that recipe that is unique to you that is going to allow you to follow through on those milestones that you wrote down? So that's step number four. Step number five is, is the final one, is one that is really going to be an ongoing one. So I didn't yet spend a lot of time on that one today because it's going to be one that's going to be done more week to week and in the moment as you're going through the year. And that's what that is, is plan out your days to be able to tackle very specific tasks that connect back to your milestones. So it's one thing to have your big milestone, for example, the example that I talked about earlier, where I wanna grow my, my coaching skill set even more. My One of my milestones in January is to complete a certification program that I'm currently working on. So that's a milestone that I have set for myself for January. Now, the first week of January, what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at those milestones, for example, that one and think about, okay, what are the specific steps that I need to add to my to do list or my calendar in order to make sure that I'm working towards that. So how many pages am I going to read of the manual that I'm working? How many videos am I going to, am I going to watch and so forth? So really, it's about taking that milestone and making it into something that's really, really specific. And that's document it in your calendar or your to-do list. If it's not, it's likely not going to happen. So write it down, make it part of your day. All right. So 
That's step number five, is bringing it down to the most minute, specific task level. So those are the five steps, the five steps that I have followed in creating my own roadmap for, for my 2021 planning. And my dogs are starting to go crazy. Ah, it's life. Anyway, so um, they don't like visitors in our camper. <laughs> I'll let them quiet down. That's Brisket, and this is Loli, so a little Chihuahua, in case you caught sight of them. <laughs> anyway, so I wanted to share a couple of things as I close out on on this roadmap, and and thank you so much for for going along this journey with me. You know, it was something that I wanted to do on my own, and I thought, why not share the way that I'm doing it with others? So thank you if, if you've been along this whole three week journey. There's a couple of of things that I want to mention as you think about your roadmap. One is how do you practically put this on paper, right? Like how do you document it? A notebook certainly works. A notebook and pen is, is perfectly fine. But you can also step away from the traditional notebook, which sometimes prevents us from thinking more creatively and in a less of a linear way. And instead maybe think about using post-its. So if you have an office, a space where you can stand up and just move post-its around, this will allow you to be really flexible with your roadmap as time goes on. You can move the different post-its on or off your roadmap. You can move them to different months, add new post-its. So I love working with post-its because of the flexibility that it gives me in really looking at a roadmap in a way that is changeable because it's going to change. Now, I use post-its to create my roadmap, but as you can imagine, in an 84 square foot camper with these two crazy dogs over there, there's no way that I can have post-its on a wall. I don't even have real walls. So what I used is a tool called Miro. It's M-I-R-O. It's free. And it's in a digital whiteboard, basically, where you can use different post-its and create all sorts of different, you know, structures, I guess. Um, for projects. And so I used it for this particular road mapping process um, to help me just map out, you know, what's January going to look like February, March. So look into that tool. There's other tools out there certainly that will work too. Google has Jamboards. Um, Mural is another one that I used to use a lot, but I think there's that's not that's not free. Um, Miro, the one that I use is free. So M-I-R-O, check it out. Is that something that you want to want to use and explore? The second thing that I want to mention about this whole road mapping process is that my goal in sharing my own process that I followed is not to be prescriptive, not to say that this is the way that you must do your create your roadmap. This is the only way. Certainly not. There are many, many ways. This is simply the way that I've done it. And certainly I invite you to take the whole process if that helps you or just take one piece or take no pieces. But maybe I've inspired some new new ways of thinking. Do, you know, take what works for you. Don't take whatever doesn't work for you. Really, my goal is to help you perhaps get out of that, like, just writing lists down mode, which is what I've done and just has not worked into something that is more about keeping that growth mindset alive, about really focusing on how you want to feel, about ensuring that you've got the right support mechanisms within and around you to be to, to be that best you, right? That recipe. So I hope that some or all, you know, at least one of these components have been have been helpful for you. Again, leave what, what doesn't and take what does work for you. So as I sign off, I want to wish you a very wonderful holiday season and a fulfilling, productive, fruitful 2021. I myself am going to be taking some time off starting the middle of next week with my husband and we're going to be hopefully spending some time hiking, taking really time to be out in nature and disconnecting from technology. So I won't be joining you on Thriving Thursdays until 2021, which is really not that far away. It'll be January 7th will be when I will be on here again. In the meantime, I wish I wish you a, a healthy 2021, a productive, loving and fulfilling year. And I will see you in January of 2021. Thank you so much. Bye.